Hello, welcome to an extra extended version of lecture 25 for math 2R03. Now, this is kind of in some sense extra because I wanted to spend a little bit of time giving you an example of a worked out example of finding the Jordan form of a matrix, just so that you have uh, an example that you can look at maybe to help you when you're looking at the proof. Now, as you'll see from this extra lecture here, um, that finding the, these things is something you can do. It uses all the techniques that you would have learned in Math 1B03 or earlier in the course, but it's very time consuming. And for that reason, you can probably expect, and, I, and I'll make this clear later on, that there's no way I can give you a question on a midterm or an exam, unless that was the entire exam or midterm because of all the computations involved. Um, however, I do thought it is good that you know that such a thing exists and you do need these sorts of things in some of your upper year courses like uh, differential equations and um, partial differential equations. So uh, what I'm going to do is kind of actually go through this material a lot quicker than I would normally do in a regular lecture just because it's kind of supplementary. Okay, so the example I want to look at is actually the example that I gave in lecture 25. I said I gave a Jordan basis for this particular linear operator. And so just kind of in this extra lecture, I want to show how I got this basis. Okay, so it's a Jordan that it's in Jordan form. Now, with respect to the standard basis, it's clearly not in the Jordan form because the Jordan form has block diagonal matrices where the eigenvalues are appearing on the uh, diagonal entries and then you are allowing some ones on the diagonal above it and then there are zeros everywhere else. Okay. Now we've actually kind of mined or looked at this example a lot in lecture 23. All right, so in lecture 23, we started off with the information that 10 is an eigenvalue with multiplicity of one and 20 is an eigenvalue of multiplicity of three. So we know that we can break our vector space into uh, direct sums of generalized eigenspaces. And so this, gives us, this is something that we use kind of over and over again, this result about breaking our vector space into various um, direct sums. And so what we want to do is now find a basis for the first space and the basis for the second space. And we want to pick it so that when we look at the associated matrix, we get a matrix with lots of zeros or in a Jordan form. Okay. Now, when we are looking at the eigenvalue of 10, kind of everything is nice because the multiplicity is one, okay? And why why does that make it nice? Well, in this case, because the multiplicity is one, we get right away from the get-go that uh, the eigenspace of that eigenvalue is the exact same thing as the generalized eigenspace. And just using stuff you would have learned in your first linear algebra course, we know that the eigenspace, is, which is equal to the generalized eigenspace, is the null space of this matrix right here. And so just remember that this is the same thing as the null space of the matrix you get from taking your the matrix of the operator and you're taking 10 minus uh, i as t minus 10 times i. So that's where this matrix comes from. And I won't go through all the calculations, but this is something that you can do, is that the span of this eigenspace, or this eigenspace is given by the span of this vector, one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so if we go, go back to this guy right here, because the dimension is one, all we need to do is find uh, a dimension of the eigenspace, and that actually is the thing that we need to find the Jordan base basis. Things only become complicated when one of these generalized eigenspaces has a dimension greater than one. So we're going to look at this example, right, uh, this part right here. Okay. Okay, so I'll get things set up and then we'll take a break uh, uh, to kind of go into the gory details. But what, one of the things that we have here is that since the multiplicity of uh, lambda is uh, of lambda 20, or the eigenvalue 20 is three, 
what we know is that the dimension of the generalized eigenspace of 20 is 3. So this is a three-dimensional space. And so what we need to do is we need to find three basis elements, right? But what we need to do is we need to find good basis elements, right? But we want good basis elements. So that the associated matrix has the Jordan form. Right, so one thing you should learn know about the course so far, right, it's when you have a, uh, a vector space, there's many, many, many different type bases you have, and some bases are better than others. So we're trying to find three things. Okay, and so what we need to do is we need to find bases for, first of all, the whole space. Okay, so that's just the null space of the matrix. Then we need to find a uh, basis for the range of this space or the range of the operator t minus 20i, and then we need to find a basis for the range of t minus 20i squared. Okay. And why these particular spaces? Well, I just a couple things I want to point out is that the range of the operator t minus 20i sits inside the general eigenspace. The range of that operator contains the range of the operator t minus 20i squared, and then inside of that is the zero operator. Okay, and why do, am I only going to two? Right? Why don't I have to worry about three? It's because when I take the range, I take the range of t minus 20i cubed. This will be a zero-dimensional space, right? Because we know that the generalized eigenspace has dimension three. We know, we know that this is the same thing, that the null space of this guy is equal to the null uh, is equal, the null space of this operator is equal to the op, uh, generalized eigenspace. And this just follows from the fundamental theorem of linear maps. So the range, dimension of the range is zero. Okay, so we'll end off this part here with just a picture and then we'll come back. So just to kind of recap here, is we have our generalized eigenspace. Inside of it sits the range of the operator t minus 20i, and sitting inside of that is the range of t minus 20i squared. And then sitting inside of that is the zero subspace. And the reason we have this picture is because the operator t minus 20i is invariant on this space. So when you apply this operator to anything inside of here, you're getting something that bounces back into the space, right? And then you get something that bounces back into that space, but it's smaller. And each step, we're getting something smaller and smaller. So we'll pause here and I'll get ready for part two.